Hey, look, uh, what a great day to uh, welcome back uh, this, this incredible division of the 101st, and uh, what a great uh, time to do it with their families here. They have been actually uh, at a very special time in Afghanistan doing some very, very difficult work. In, in shifting over to a training and assist uh, mission, uh, continuing to build the capacity and capability of the Afghan National Army, uh, in addition to uh, setting the, the stage for the future, uh, they, they have had a very, very tough and very difficult and complex mission. And they have performed in an outstanding fashion. I was there this past summer. I visited uh, General McConville and the division. And uh, I was incredibly impressed with what they were doing. So I'm delighted to be back here to welcome them back and welcome the soldiers of this incredible force back, to, back home. Uh, in addition, just want to say how much uh, we appreciate the support of the community. Uh, we obviously rely as well on those soldiers and their families who have remained here and who have carried the, the water for the Army in Fort Campbell in the absence of those brigades who deployed. They have all deployed in the past, so um, it's, it's great work that they do to keep, to keep us uh, trained and ready to go. And we appreciate the, the leadership of, uh, again, of the community and uh, the families who are so stalwart in all this. So with all that, let me open it up for questions. Sir, sure, first question, we're going to go to Brett Baroque from uh, Associated Press. Hi. Uh, with the budget cutbacks and the reshuffling the Army's doing in its size, how, how are those reduction efforts going, and what does that mean to the future of places like Fort Campbell? Uh, I think the future of Fort Campbell is, is very well said. It's you know, one of our most important uh, posts uh, in the world. Uh, we have uh, an incredible opportunity to improve on training and readiness for our force. I think the budget situation is going to allow us uh, to continue to build capability and capacity as we come out of these combat operations. So I'm fairly optimistic about the future from a budget standpoint. Phil Gray, the problem. Sir, uh, what is the prospect today as we stand for a continued military presence of the United States in Afghanistan beyond the end of 2014? Well, I personally believe that, that, uh, that there's going to be a presence there for us. It's an important mission that we have uh, to see this through. I believe that uh, we will see a time when an agreement will be reached the uh, government of Afghanistan uh, and the, the terms will be set. How, how big a force we'll have is yet to be determined. But I think there will, will be an opportunity for us to, uh, to continue to take care of uh, supporting that mission. Now, the other part of uh, what the 101st has been doing is the retrograde, you know, bringing all the equipment back. Uh, significant, significant job there. We need to continue to that. We need to bring that equipment back. We need to reset it here back in the States. So that's another reason for, uh, for being, trying to be optimistic about the uh, need to have forces in there. Thank you, sir. Carla Jimenez? Um, yes, sir. Um, Kentucky New Era, right? Yes. Here we go. Uh, you mentioned that while you were in, uh, you were in Afghanistan um, in the summer, so you watched how it's all going, how do you think that the uh, mission basis, the aiding and assisting the mission is going to be uh, you know, the way the way I gauge it is by talking to the soldiers. So, you know, wherever we went, and I went with General Campbell, who's our Vice Chief of Staff, and he commanded the 25th and 4th. Uh, we would huddle with, with our soldiers uh, and, and ask them very plainly, what do you think? Are the Afghans ready? Uh, how are they doing their, their missions? And, you know, they would give us what, what uh, sometimes were surprising, uh, complimentary comments about their capability, knowing that they don't have the resources, they don't have the, the training that, that our forces do. But the soldiers were overwhelmingly positive in saying they're ready, they are uh, capable, they are uh, they're leading the way. So 
I think that's the best measure. Yes, sir, do you have any closing comments? <laughs> well, I, you know, I mentioned the retrograde function. Uh, again, that's a very, that's, you know, to the taxpayer, to the American taxpayer, uh, that's, that's critically important. We've invested the millions of dollars in, in, uh, in moving all that equipment, and we are going to continue to make sure that we bring it back and honor the, uh, the labor of our, of our taxpayers who made that possible. The 101st has been absolutely diligent. We visited all the sites, so that, that was great. The other thing I, I would say is, uh, you know, the Army is just an incredible force. I mean, when you think about all the things that this Army does around the world, regardless of, of what area you pick, whether it's science, medicine, whether it's helping people with disaster, uh, combating uh, crime, I mean, no matter what it is around the world, the United States Army is, it's got capability, it's got resources, it's got the ability to handle those missions. It's got the leadership. It's an incredible resource for the country. And so what the Secretary of the Army and the Chief of Staff and the Vice and I are all trying to do at this time is to ensure this great capacity and take it into the future in a balanced way to create uh, the continue to create uh, every which way we can the ability for this great force to make a difference around the world. <coughs> uh, I think we will be successful in ensuring a very positive future for our forces. So when you ask about Fort Campbell, I mean, Fort Campbell is a gem for us in so many different ways. And uh, it's, it's this kind of a, uh, an element that we need to ensure we continue to invest in and we continue to support.